That's basically what Jackenberg stands for. And any regulation as a libertarian really comes from personal conscience having been transformed. So that's essentially what it means. That's essentially transformed consciousness and social conscience and awareness based on that transformation. Now, um, I recently wrote an article that I shared with you, and I thought after, after, actually it was only after writing it that I realized, oh, this is the same thing as Drakenberg, or it's the same concept. I was writing about the idea of Saturn's kingdom, or the kingdom yeah. of Kronos, who, for, just for the audience's sake, you know, supposedly Saturn was the king of this, this old world, and uh, yeah. was dethroned by Zeus, uh, who's equivalent to the, the Jehovah, the, the god of the current epoch. Yeah. And uh, he was sort of imprisoned in the other world, but he made his kingdom in his prison. So it sort of still exists. It always has existed and always will exist in the center of the earth. And according to the legends, people can still go there, especially, you know... Um, people who have been called to do so yeah uh he he rules there as sort of the lord of misrule that's what they describe him as that and and that during his epoch when he ruled on earth that was the golden age when supposedly he didn't he didn't really rule he didn't he didn't uh you know have to tell people what to do because there was no need to work and there was no money and there was no property and everyone held everything in common it was sort of this this realm of peaceful anarchy. I thought that was interesting because, yeah, you're you're saying that uh, now you we want to take the concept of Drakenberg and uh, use it. I guess, and I'll I'll let you explain uh, in in a modern context to actually form a a new sovereign state based yes. on the concept of Drakenberg. Go ahead. Yes, a uh, libertarian state where behavior is a matter of education before liberation, if you wish. But that magnificent essay of yours, Tracy, it it kind of encapsulated it. We have Kronos, uh, the father of the Titans, who's Anu in a sense, Anu, and the the actual Titans. The word in Greek means the white ones, and so does Elf. It means the white or Elves. It means the white ones. So we have this kind of crossover. But the the concept of like in Tiamat chaos or the concept of misrule is something that must have been perceived by a society that was hidebound in regulation, in authority, in conformity, and so on. And to see that possibly people can potter about uh, quite happily without all that uh, regulatory nonsense, that they can actually be able to see what is right and have what is right burns into their hearts as I think Jesus said that is the kingdom of God that's the kingdom of heaven it is the ideal and that I think is what we are about we are trying through science through education and not through silly mumbo jumbo or new age occultism but through proper scientific research and education we are trying to offer that capability once more well I remember I think the original intent of the of the Declaration of Independence here in the United States, or it wasn't even called that yeah. back then, but uh, the, the idea was that uh, they were going to separate from the sovereignty of the British monarch and essentially institute a government of sovereigns here where every man was a sovereign. Now, <laughs> that didn't work out. They didn't uh, end up doing that, really. Uh, they changed the understanding of the law pretty quickly. But Do you remember uh, a couple of weeks ago I asked if anyone could dig out Lysander Spoon, and Brian did, did a brilliant job of it, and Spooner said that anything like a constitution or a declaration of independence it must be signed up for by each generation, not expecting the generation that established it to continue those laws on for decades or centuries and make other people conform to any declaration of independence. Spooner said that it is generationally consensual and each generation has to be able to say yes or no because otherwise <laughs> democracy is not democracy at all, it's just totalitarianism. Otherwise you have the assumption that someone else owns you, basically. Absolutely. If if someone were to join Drakenberg, if you were to able able to, as you're as you're planning on doing, get recognition from the United Nations 
and you know cr- create some sort of sovereign state even even if you don't actually have physical land create some realm in which people can join up would it be really that concept of everyone within this state is a sovereign because i know that people who join the dragon court for the most part they they get titles royal titles that are uh, assigned to them or that they choose and is that then that is that a way of basically declaring your own sovereignty no, we haven't um, given titles out. I gave one out to Charles Johnson, and that title was Marshal, which basically means marshal or protector. Each of these titles, if you look back into the Latin, they're job descriptions. We don't give title if somebody has royal blood and they have a grasp of the concept of sovereignty and liberty. Then we recognise their right to the title. We don't give it. Okay. Yes. You see, the concept of sovereignty is, has been mucked about so badly that now it just means some idiot in some office rules a piece of uh, real estate. It doesn't mean much more than that, and it, with that goes various rights internationally. For us as dragons, sovereignty is the concept of personal liberty, personal liberation from the confining mores, attitudes, concepts, and so on, that are imposed upon people in their daily lives, which is why we have become members of the European Commission's uh, Register of Representatives, which is why we're going to the United Nations, and which is why we are seeking to ratify uh, an implied sovereign status which was uh, given over 13 years ago. The reason for that is because with sovereign and diplomatic status, there is a psychological uh, condition within the, the individual that they are free to follow their conscience and if they have diplomatic status which is intended then they are free of uh, those restrictions and institutions which uh, seem to bind their minds and their daily lives up at the present moment so that is the concept of Drakenberg as a diplomatic and sovereign nation state is one of real liberty you know we have uh, well anarchists or libertarians pottering around saying nobody is above me nobody is above me I'm my own god yeah yeah right until the coppers come home and nick you for something right I mean it's an illusion but if you go the whole hog and you really fight uh, for recognition as a sovereign nation of blood and you fight for diplomatic status and you you give that sovereignty back to your family, you know, the Dragon Court, then in reality, politically and psychologically speaking, they are free. And that can only lead on to spiritual freedom because you cannot separate spiritual from material and you cannot separate uh, spiritual from religious or political or social activity or physical activity. Everything is one thing. So if you knock one of the blocks out from this uh, restrictive prison, mental prison, then the rest of it will collapse as well. So the the kingdom of of Drakenberg exists already, Uh, the freedom and the sovereignty of it exists already, and to get international recognition of its existence would be merely to discard mental blocks that people might have about the actuality of this concept and, and to bring it more into physical reality but it already exists whether or not that ever happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're not going to do jumping up and down outside embassies or high commissions. We're going to do it in the tried and tested lady and gentlemanly fashion of negotiation and smiling because if you start bashing on somebody's door, they'll just bash on you. It just doesn't <laughs> work that you, you know, this is where a lot of, of protesters go wrong. They go... Like in last week in London, 250,000 people turned up to protest cuts in government spending. It was a peaceful protest except for a few anarchist kids who smashed a few windows in and sprayed paint on walls. And guess what? The actual protest wasn't covered by the media at all. But the little anarchists going around being naughty, that was given major, major media coverage. General intention was to demean and uh, bring into disrepute the idea that anyone should protest against cuts in health, cuts in education, cuts in anything else. And so that was kind of a bit of a no-hoper, really. So we don't really 
make any difference with that kind of activity, I don't think, uh, unless you're going to br actually bring a government down. Um, mm -hmm. they do. <laughs> so what we th is you go in the back door and you negotiate and, uh, you know, you just put the wooden box in front of the bonobos and when they stop shagging each other through terror, they'll get used to it. And, um, you know, you then become part of the system, uh, recognized by a system, and uh, then you go your own way. But you're not controlled and by the system. You're just, you're, you're a king among kings then at that point. That's right, absolutely. And then everyone in the court has the opportunity through education and liberation to find their own sovereignty and act freely according to their conscience. That was Nicholas Devere von Drakenberg. You can look him up on Facebook or follow the links at libertycappress.com.